Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to dive into EVNG Community Edition and explore why your lab nodes need internet access and how to configure VMware network adapters, bridge, NAT, and host only. To make that possible, understand the mapping of VMware adapters to the EVNG cloud interfaces. And last, we'll close with showing you three different examples on how to do this on a Cisco router, FortiGate, and an end device like a Linux. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Now let's get into the video. This is the setup that I have in my lab where I'm going to try and show you how do I give two of the nodes. In this case, I have a 14 at firewall and I have a Cisco router internet access. Now, before we jump into the actual lab and start to look into these options, there are a few things to understand. First of all, why do I even want a node inside an EVNG to access internet? Now, first thing would be is what about if you have a device inside that you want to go ahead and give it some sort of software or signature updates? For example, if there is a firewall that needs to access the internet to download a particular firmware or a update for threat or threat intelligence, then that's one reason. Another reason would be is to test real world connectivity. So validate some sort of routing configuration with real internet endpoints. That could be another reason why would you want to do that? Third reason that comes to my head would be accessing external repositories. Let's say if you have a Linux box running inside that might need to pull packages which need to be updated from an online repository. That would be another reason. Fourth would be learning and demonstration for training purposes, for demonstrating how a firewall is controlling the outbound traffic or how NAT is configured or how ACLs are implemented with a real traffic flow to the internet. This is the reason why I would want to do that. Now, as we all know, and you've seen this in the previous videos, that EVNG actually is set up within the VMware. What kind of adapters that does VMware have? That's something that we need to understand. So I'm going to go and show you the EVNG setup here. Now, the way you want to look at this is now this is my EVNG. I go right click and I click on settings and it shows me different options. I see NAT here. I see host only. I see bridged. Now, what are these? So first talk about bridge. What does bridge adapter really mean is bridge adapter means is the virtual NIC to your host is bridged, which means is if my laptop has an IP address, for example, I'm just going to do an IP config slash all my laptop is getting a 192.168.100. Some IP and it's a slash 24. Now, if I have a device inside my lab, it will be on the same network as this one, as my real network. Now, this IP address has been given by my actual physical DHCP that's on my network. So that's when you want to use a bridge. The other option that you see is host only. Host only is if you want to only allow communication between the host within that VMware. So you need a separate network, but that's only within that EVNG setup you have your lab. That's basically why would you use a host only. NAT adapter would be, let's say, for example, I want to have internet access. So you can still use NAT to give internet access, but just that it's going to be a different IP address. For example, if I go into my setup here, and if I want to see what IP address is, is it getting, so in order to check that, what I can do is I can close this. So I can go to edit and I can go virtual network editor and it pulls it here. So it tells me that if you use a NAT, this is what you're going to get, which really means is this is the range it is. So the 192.168.100.0 slash 24 was my local range. And then IP address range for the EVNG devices is going to be in this. So each node, if I pick up and I connect to the NAT, it will get this. And then it's going to, while it's sending out, it just switches back to the 100 dot. If you want to give internet access, you either need to be NATed or you need to be bridge. Host only will not give you internet. Now, the next thing you want to remember is if you want to go back uh, to this lab, we have spoken about this in the last video, is it has different network options. It has bridge, and then it has these cloud zero, cloud one. But main thing in order to give you internet is these ones. Bridge is just, we discussed before, is just an unmanaged switch. Now, in order to get internet, I need to be connected to either of these, and then they are basically mapped to the VMware network adapters. Now, the way I have done my mapping is something like my network adapter one, two, and three. I'll show you that again. If I go here, right click settings, 
network adapter 1, 2, and 3, they're mapped to NAT, bridge, and host only. Now, you can add more adapters if you like, or you can remove one if you like. So if you click on this and you say remove, it will remove that. If you want to add more, you just click on add and it adds more. And that's how you add more adapters if you want to and if you haven't had any, right? So if you click on add, it just gives you another fourth and then which one you want to set up as. So I'll remove that. That just shows you how to do addition or removal of any adapters. Now, going back to the mapping that I wanted to show you is that network one is, is mapped to the cloud. Now, in my case, network one, if you remember, was actually natted. Okay. The network two adapter was bridged and the network three is host only. And then their mapping is cloud zero, cloud one, cloud two, and so on. Right. So network four will be mapped to cloud three, network five will be mapped to cloud uh, four and so on. This is how the mapping works. Once you understand how this mapping is done, let me quickly show you how I have set up my lab here so you can understand it more better. In this lab, what I have done is, now think of this as two separate setups if you want to, right? So if you say, uh, so this is more like, let's say, setup one. So this is more like a setup one here, right? And then we have another setup. So these are separate. I could have this one as one setup and then with Fortinet, I have another setup. Now let's see how this one specifically works. For the internet, if I go and edit, what I've done is if you notice is I'm giving it access to cloud one, right? So I've picked up cloud one in my option here. Now what was my cloud one? If you remember, the cloud one was my bridged. Bridge was whatever my laptop's IP address is. Technically, I'm on 192.168.100. something slash 24, which means this router should also get the same IP address. Think of this as like a client. This could be, a, this I'm just showing router, but if you plug directly into this, uh, if you have a PC here and you connect directly to this internet, that's what it's gonna give you, right? Let's double click on that and I'm in it. Let's say I'm gonna do enable, show IP interface brief. Now that tells you that this is the same IP address. If you look at the range, it's same as what I had on my laptop. So this one is 192.168.100.50. My actual laptop is 100.42. They're absolutely in the same range, layer two networks. Let's try to see if I can ping it. If I can ping 192.168.100.42. I'm trying to ping my own laptop here. It doesn't like to ping it. Maybe there is something there. Uh, let's try to ping the gateway here. Yeah, it's pinging. Let's try to ping something onto the internet. So let's try to ping 8.8.8.8. See if it can ping. Yes, it can. Let's try just one more IP. How about 1.1.1.1? So very simply, I've just taken a device and I've mapped it to cloud one, which is also mapped on the VMware to the bridge. And that's all I need to make sure that my router is able to go to the internet now, which is inside the EVNG setup. Now, what about firewall? Firewalls are a little more complex because we need to do a few more things. Let's talk about the firewall now. So we're going to start our focus and move the focus onto the second scenario here, which is the Fortinet. This is the second scenario. Okay. So the second scenario is I have a Fortinet firewall. Port 4 is my van where I'm connected to the same internet, which is bridged. I'm hoping that it should be, be able to give me the same IP address, 192.168.100 dot something. Port one, I've connected to management. Now the reason I've done it, this to management, which is the NAT, so that I can log onto the firewall, okay? So if I click on the Fortinet and I've just logged in and I have just issued a command diagnose IP address list. And I've shown all this in the, previous video in case you're a little lost here make sure you watch all the previous videos so i've walked you through how do you add fortinet uh, into the evng and how do you look at the addresses uh, that you're connected to and then how do you log on to a fortinet uh, here it tells me that yes uh, your port one is getting 192.168.136.132 
and that's where I am in here. And I have already set up a temporary password, which I'm going to use to log in. And simply by saying that later, I'm in my box right now. Now, this is the dashboard where you normally start. But where I'm going here is I'm going to go into the network and I'm going to go into the interfaces. This is kind of where I am starting up. Now, let's start with the port 4, which is the van, right? So let's click on that and click on edit. I'm getting a DHCP. So if you look at it, same IP address because it's bridge 192.168.100.41, right? And the default gateway is that. And that's my role is van and I'm connected to van. I'm calling it van internet. This is trying to configure port, which is this one right here, port 4. Port 1, as I said, that was already just the login. So port 1 was to log into the actual box, into the graphical user interface, so I can make those changes. 4 gave me access to the internet. And now the port 2 is actually the LAN where I'm just connected a LAN, uh, just connected a Linux box here, which is just testing for connectivity. Okay, so let's go back and look at the LAN port now. So if I go to LAN port, I'm saying this is the IP address. I've picked up a network here, 192.168.50.1, and I'm enabling DHCP server. So the Forty gate can actually give an IP address to the box that you connect to it. For example, when I go and connect this box here, it will give me an IP address. This lab actually is, is a very good first lab that I would say. So this is almost like bringing a Fortinet home and trying to connect it and trying to use it as your home router for lack of better terms. But this is pretty much like a single device that you can learn how to do policies on it, how to basically configure the IP addresses. Uh, I would say a great first lab to test different scenarios, which we can work on in the future for now. Let's go back to our lab that we're working on. Port 2 is our LAN. Uh, I decided to change the IP here. Let me just change that just to make sure that what I have done here is not 20. It's actually 50 here. That's what I'm using. And I'm also running a DHCP on this one. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Port 1. As you notice, that is a management port. And again, there's nothing much on it. It's just getting an IP address from the NAT interface that's been mapped. This is all done. Now, a few other things that you have to do is you can also do a DNS. It's automatically getting it. But let's say if you want to specify, you can specify DNS that you like it to use, right? I can say instead of using uh, this, I want you to use 8.8.8. .8 .8, and I also want you to use secondary as 1.1.1 and not the 8.4.4.4. You apply that and that goes in. The next thing you want to do is the static route where you're saying, okay, if you want to go to the internet, the destination is this and you're using the WAN port to go to the internet and that's about it. Let's jump into the VNC. I'm going to log into the Linux. You just double click on this and I'm in the machine. What I've done here is I have run an IF config, which is equal to IP config in Windows. And it tells me what IP address am I getting. If you look carefully here, I'm getting a 192.168.50.101. I just had to uh, reboot the 40 net here. So if I go back, I can get an IP address or I can actually manually sign it. So this little Linux option gives me, I'm giving it an IP address. It's the same range we set up. And if I go back here now quickly, uh, I'm able to ping to, I tried pinging the 50.1, which is a gateway. It pings, yes. So let's drop the ping. Let's start pinging the 8.8.8.8, .8 which is internet. Yes, it pings. This Linux version I really like is because actually it also has an enabled browser. So let's test that out. See if I can actually go to google.ca. And if you see that it's shown up and I'm on Google right now. So again, this is the simple way of getting sure that I can give access to any device inside my. Now I can directly connect something if I had a node, for example, the one of the nodes that I use here, if I had a Linux node here, right? I also have an option to connect this directly to internet. And if I start this, So I'll wait it for starting, and once I'm in here, I can try doing the same thing. It's going to boot up. Once it's boot up, I can log in and see if I can actually get into the. So it boots up pretty quick. 
let's see if it has some sort of internet connectivity i config it does it's giving it's a bridge so it's getting me directly 100 dot ip so let's try to ping 8.8.8 .8 yes i can ping it let's try cnn.com this time yes of course i can get it right so this is very simply you can get access to all the nodes to the internet and that's it for today you now have a functional evng lab with nodes that can reach the internet if you enjoyed this video remember to leave like drop a comment telling me what you like to see next and share this video with anyone who is starting with networking don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.